already know, I'm from a small town. I graduated with 33 people in my graduating class of 09. Um, whenever I, um, whenever I thought of taking the next step in my life, I always thought of medicine and helping others. And um, it's not the fact that I want to go to third world countries and help people, but it's the fact that all those other people who've helped me, I think they just return or need something in return. So on August 16th, I I took the next step and I decided that I was going to go sign up for the Marines. Um, every year they had been at our school and I had. Uh, challenged myself to do pull-ups at the at the lunch table and I would always get a shirt you had to do 20 pull-ups and the marine my sophomore year asked me have you ever thought of you know being a marine taking his challenge being one of the proud one of the proud one of the few and after I thought about it more and more I, I realized that this was my calling so I took the ASVAB and I scored an 89 it's out of a uh, hundred I think and I was going to be intelligence and um, I went to the Days Inn in St. Louis and I spent the night, woke up at 3 o'clock in the morning and we were taken to the Robert E. Young building and that's where we were going to get our physical. Um, well, uh, a Marine came up to me and tapped me on the shoulder and led me somewhere through this maze where I didn't know where I was going and there a civilian stood and he had a blue coat on, uh, a blue kind of windbreaker and he asked me to turn around. So I turned around and he ankle shackled me and he uh, arrested me and told me it was for his own protection. Um, I, I, I was shocked. I'm usually an optimistic person and I didn't know what was going on and I kind of tried to joke about it and I'm like, you guys have the wrong guy. And they took me through the back and they took me downstairs um, with a, through a beat up elevator and uh, as soon as I got downstairs, they, they were, they, the whole time they were yelling at me, saying, how did you think you could get away with this, and um, you, you can't fool us, and this is all your fault. And once I got downstairs, they put me in a, in a room all by myself, and a, a bigger guy came in. His name was Tyson, and he explained to me that the Social Security card that I had given him, that my mom had given me ever since I was 12 and started working, uh, wasn't mine, and uh, all of my... Um, my ID and such, they were, uh, as of then, invalid, and I was getting deported because my mom had bought me a fake Social Security number whenever I was four years old. So I was shocked, and uh, I remember I looked out the window, and he gave me two options. One was calling my mom and having her come fix this, and the second option was getting deported to Chicago. And there was a small slit in the window, and I looked out, and I saw across from me was a cell of about 30 or 40 kids. Um, most of them probably younger than me, some of them same age, and the look on their face was just scared. They, they wanted to go home, obviously, and I thought this was my home. Um, I was willing to die for this country, and um, I fell asleep. I ate lunch. I fell asleep, and when I woke up, my mom was there, and she tried talking to me, but I, I hated her so much. I was so shocked. I couldn't believe she would tell me this and then I tried to sign up for the Marines, you know, walked right into the lion's den and um, then it took me about two months to finally tell people, but those two months were hell. I sat in school and I couldn't concentrate. My grades were going down. I was emotionally depressed. I, I didn't know what to do. All I knew is that I was going to get deported shortly and all that I had worked for was going to waste. Um, so. I finally told my girlfriend, and she she sympathized for me. Uh, we cried, we laughed, we, and she told her parents, and they decided they wanted to help me. So, with the help of her parents, they found me a good lawyer, and my whole community by then had become involved. And it's a town of about a little under 2,000 people, and most of the people in that town wrote a petition saying that I should stay, and they wrote letters saying that um, I'm a good kid and. Uh, one letter in particular <clears throat> I was at the vet's office and uh, my my seventh grade teacher her her dog was dying so <clears throat> I asked to carry it out, and she said it was fine, but 
I, I told her I would, and I picked the dog up, and I took him outside and told him it was going to be all right. And <clears throat> she wrote a letter saying that that someone like that shouldn't be have to be put in a situation. And I mean, it happens. Maybe it happened for a reason, but <clears throat> I'm hoping on the Dream Act because it gives kids like me an opportunity. Um, I thought I had a great opportunity in front of me, but um, that was my dreams were crushed and. I don't want anyone to go through what I went through emotionally, uh, physically. I, I, I was a mess, and um, with with the help of the town, though, we um, got the judge to cancel my deport or uh, remove me from deportation proceedings. Um, they left me in limbo, so I applied to a private college, Elmhurst College. The people from my town supported me and recommended me to go there. The dean actually gave me a scholarship, so I would be able to continue. But um, I'm I'm very I'm doing this for for all of the people that that thought I could go through with it because at one point I I told them I told Ice that he put me on the plane to Chicago that I was mad I didn't I didn't really care about anything but I don't know anything else but this this is my country um, like I said. I want to be one of the few, one of the proud, a U.S. Marine, and that's still my goal to this day. So with the DREAM Act, um, hopefully if it passes, I'll be able to join and uh, serve all of you.